Hi, my name is Paul Vivo from Origin, and this is my basic champion guide to Syndra. In solo queue, you should not pick her into something like Tam Kent. I think it's a difficult matchup against Fitz, Zed as well, because these champions just can easily avoid the ultimate with their ultimate. You need to play it really, really good. You need to force the ultimate on you to counter their ultimate. I, I just don't think you should blind pick her too much. Mostly, it's a champion. She's good against champions like Hila Blor. Other, otherwise, against Ariana, Cassiopeia. It's all like equal matchups. You can win them. You can pretty much lose them, but it just depends on skill. So the early landing phase of Syndra is, depending on every matchup, a little bit different. Against melee champions, you should normally dominate them with the... Every time they go for a last hit, you Q them. You try to pop your Sunderlord's degrees with QE out attack or a WQ out attack. It's pretty straightforward. Every time they go for a last hit, doesn't matter which champion, you try to give, give them a Q, a W. You only go for the stun combo if you afterwards Play a little bit more careful because you can get more easily ganked without really avoiding, let's say, Rek'Sai Tunnel. You can destroy it easily with your stun, so if you don't have it ready, you need to play a little bit more careful. Other than that, if you get ahead, you should try to either freeze the lane, die firm, or if the matchup is like a skill matchup and both are equal, just try to farm up, push him in, and maybe look for rooms. Okay, the, the central positioning in team fights, if you can get the carries without being in danger, it's pretty good. If not, if you can't reach the back backline, you should uh, try to ult one of the more squishiest tanks. So you have a lot of bolts on the ground and you can pretty much E stun 4 or 5 people if possible. And obviously if you can somehow get a catch before the team fight, just burst everything on the AD carry or on the mid laner, it doesn't really matter. If you kind of get the feeling how to hit the stun and how much range you have with the stun. Because that's, I think, the most trickiest part on Sintra. You have already like 90% of the champion learned. Well, as mentioned before, I think one cool trick on Sintra is that you, as example, queue the backline minions. You try to wait for your next Q spell. So you can stun him with the ball on the ground. You instantly Q ultimate him, but you should use Q first. Because the Q instantly gets used for the ultimate as well. And the second trick is against the Blore. So if you just use E spell, the moment he literally is in front of you, you can't miss it and you interrupt his damage. You interrupt his damage and you interrupt maybe... You stun him and you can Wombo combo him afterwards, but... These are, I think, the, the most... Or like the best tricks you can actually do on Sintra. Okay, so in red uh, runes, I'm taking hybrid penetration. Because I really like to have the magic and the armor penetration in nearly every matchup. It helps you just to auto take trade, to magic trade with spells. So I just feel like they're really worth it. In yellows, I take the HP per level. You can use armor flat if you're playing against Zed, Talon, maybe Varos, but in nearly other, any other matchup. I would suggest going HP per level. And in blues I take 6 times CDR per level. And you can choose to take 3 times AP per level in the blues afterwards. Or magic resistance per level, magic resistance flat. It kind of just depends on you as a player. What you prefer and what you like. And crins are just standard, 3 times 5 AP. Okay, so I'm going 12-18-0. I, I like to go the feast just for landing phase, getting 20 HP. Every 20 seconds is just pretty good. Afterwards, I go for the Bounty Hunter. As Syndra, you're like an Assassin player, so you get a lot of kids normally, and you can normally always use this. In the 18, I go for the Cookies, which is pretty standard, I would say. Going for a dangerous game. I don't really like the Bandit, so I would always say you should go for a dangerous game. And then at pretty much, I think, I'm at the moment trying out going for the 5% CDR and going for Sunder Lord de Decree because if you go for the 5% CDR, you can reach 45% um, CDR with the items, the runes and masteries together with a quite good item build. I'm at the moment just trying to figure out how many bolts ball you can keep on the ground for the ultimate and every Q who is on the ground deals more damage, so I'm still trying that out, but I think it's pretty good. Level 1, I nearly always go Q. There's only one option when I take W, and that's against Cassadon. If you Q him and he Qs you, he will block the whole damage of your Q spell. So you take the W, let him Q you, you kind of chase him and throw it afterwards on him. Other than that, in every other matchup you go Q, level 2 E spell, because you can pop the Thunder Lord pretty easy if you Q E him, you stun him, and then you pop it with the third auto attack, which is a lot of burst, even so the Q spell got nerfed like a few patches ago really strong. Afterwards, you always max Q spell first, and then I really, as a player, prefer to max the stun, because the cooldown goes really low, and 
you can just very often get more opportunities, you can get more catches, you can help your team out in team fights after you use ultimate, you can get like maybe two stuns out on like more multiple people, so I really like to second max E and as last obviously you go for the W. Uh, starting items, you take the Doran's ring and two heal pots. It's pretty much standard. I don't think the Dark Seal is too strong right now because it's too much of a, a risk to take. So I would always suggest to go for the Doran's Ring. As next item, you can you have the options against APs. You can go for the Fiends or you can go for the early Abyssal. I like to go either the Finnish Codex and then going Abyssal or going the Fiends and afterwards the Abyssal. It's kind of, it depends on how much gold you have when you recall or when you need to recall. So it kind of changes the pathing. But you nearly always go a Fiends, a Bizzle against AP, and against ADs you can go Morelos, Arm Seeker. You don't need to upgrade the Zonias early, but the Arm Seeker for armor and stacking is pretty strong. If you have against AP, a Fiends, a Bizzle, let's say Sock Boots, because I don't, I, I don't think the CDR Boots are too strong on her. You should go for just crucial burst, so I would suggest the uh, Rabadons and. Then you have the option to instantly go afterwards Void Staff. So you have pretty much 5 items and then it lays on you again. You can go for the Rylai's, what I really like. Or you can go for the Ludens if you want more movement speed. You can go for Zonias even so you are playing against an AP because you can let's say uh, destroy the 6 ultimate if you use Zonias. And the item build kind of changes to AD. Just the Athenes changes to Morellos and the Bizzle changes to um, Ludens, an early Rylai's. You don't need the Void Staff too early. I think it's more important to get um, the Rubber Dons as like third item, fourth item, before you go for the Void Staff. Because with the Abyssal, let's say Sock Boots, you have already a lot of magic penetration and normally you just need crucial AP. Thanks for watching this Sintra Basic Champion Guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lolclass.com.